Hello, this is Phil Kandrave at the Naval Postgraduate School. This short video is an introduction to the broader federal budget process within which defense budgeting occurs. We think about budgeting at the federal level. It's basically a four-step process. The first step is that executive branch agencies would formulate their budget requests. Those would then be passed to Congress, the legislature, for enactment, authorization of programs and appropriation of funding. And then once the executive branch gets their funding, they would go ahead and execute that budget. Now these earlier two steps, budget formulation and legislative enactment, look at current budget execution as an input to that decision process. Once the funds have been executed, there's a reporting, accounting, auditing, evaluation phase to look at how things are going. And that too feeds into the next round of executive branch budget formulation and congressional enactment. So let's dive a little deeper into particularly the first two boxes uh, to see how that process works. But first, let's take a look at the calendar. The federal fiscal year runs from October 1st through September 30th. The budget is due from the executive branch to Congress by the first Monday in February of each year. So let's assume that it's the, currently the end of February 2021. So what's going on in the budget calendar? Well, we would be wrapping up the fifth month of execution of the fiscal year 2021 budget. For those accounts that have multi-year money, we would be in the second year of our 2020 budget, third year of our 2019 budget, and so on. Assuming the budget was submitted to Congress on time in early February, Congress would now be at the beginning of the enactment phase for the fiscal year 2022 budget, which means they'd be holding hearings. They'd be receiving testimony from officials within the various government agencies uh, asking them questions about their budget request. And those officials would be justifying that request uh, for Congress's consideration. Meanwhile, in the executive branch agencies, we would already have started formulating the 2023 budget. More details on the formulation phase are available, particularly for national defense, are available in the PPBE video, Planning, Programming, Budgeting, and Execution System we use in the Department of Defense to formulate that annual defense budget request. Looking broadly across the executive branch of the federal government, this is the flow to get the budget to Congress. It all begins with the president developing his or her budget and fiscal policy. That is distributed through the Office of Management and Budget an agency within the White House who works directly for the president would send out the budget call and guidance to the agencies to begin putting their budget estimates together. The agencies would be working through the spring into the summer, building their budgets for the following fiscal year and would transmit them to OMB, usually in September. OMB would then take a month or two to review them, hold hearings with the agencies, ask questions, and then OMB would mark up that budget and pass it back to the agency. And this markup is changes, right? They, yes, you can do this. No, you can't do that. Um, I'm changing the total amount of money that's available to you uh, on and on. The agencies would then rewrite their budget, be reviewed by the president and OMB and approved. The agencies do have an opportunity to appeal those OMB passbacks, um, and in some cases, uh, those decisions may end up on the president's desk. Once the president approves the budget, usually in the December time frame, January is spent writing it up for Congress. OMB would be preparing the government-wide materials. The agencies would be writing the specific program-by-program -program budgets, which would then all get transmitted to Congress by that first Monday in February. So now let's take a look at what's going on over in the halls of Congress. That process actually begins before they receive the budget. The Congressional Budget Office will prepare 
baseline estimates, typically published a couple of weeks before the president's budget comes out. They do this before the budget comes out so that it does not appear to be a response to the budget. But what it is is baseline information on the state of the economy and the state of spending on deficits and debt, out-year projections for those things, which would then be compared to what the president is proposing in the budget because the president's proposals will change some of those numbers. So what Congress wants is to have kind of an objective baseline of what's our starting position when we then consider the president's budget. Those estimates are shared with the budget committees and the appropriations committees. Then the president's budget comes over to Congress and the budget will be sent essentially to four places, to the budget committees, to the Congressional Budget Office, to the Appropriations Committees, and to each of the authorizing committees. There are multiple authorizing committees within Congress who are who have subject matter expertise in the functionings of the programs within all the various agencies. The one that's relevant for national defense is the House and Senate Armed Services Committees. The role of the authorizing committees is to authorize programs. And what do we mean by that? The authorizing committees would give us uh, in DOD permission to build a new weapon system. They would authorize a certain force structure. They would authorize a certain number of folks in uniform and civilians, uh, kind of how big we are, and as well as the rules under which we operate. It's the armed services committees that would be changing uh, uh, rules for, say, uh, acquisition within the department. The appropriations committees, and there's only one in each chamber, one in the House, one in the Senate, writes all of the appropriations bills. There's a subcommittee for defense in the HAC and the SAC that would write the defense appropriation each year. The role of the budget committees is to write an overarching budget blueprint for the executive or for the legislative branch. They don't simply take the president's budget and vote on it. The president's budget is a request, it's a set of proposals, but Congress has the power of the purse, according to the Constitution. And so the budget committees would then come up with a budgeting framework of their own, informed by, and probably influenced by, the president's budget. Before that budget committee gets started, they're going to receive what are called views and estimates from the authorizing committees. So once the president's budget comes over, the House and Senate Armed Services Committees will take a quick look at it and tell the Budget Committee what they think of it at first blush. Is, does it look like enough money? Does it look like too much money? Uh, where do they think the defense budget ought to end up? And all of the authorizing committees are doing this as an input to the Budget Committees to help them write the legislative budget. The other thing that's helpful is that the Congressional Budget Office will now do an analysis of the President's budget compared to the baseline. And they'll publish that about four to six weeks after the President's budget comes out for each of the committees to consider. So here was your baseline, and here's how that baseline changes if we were to do what the President asked. Now the first committee that should act are, is the Budget Committee. And the box next to the committee that says hearings and markup committee vote is the basic legislative process that uh, everybody should have learned in a civics class in high school. Right? The committee will hold hearings. They'll bring in witnesses uh, from the agency. They may bring in outside witnesses. They may bring in folks from GAO or CBO to talk about um, the content of that budget uh, as input to their decision process. They'll mark up the legislation. They will vote within the committee presuming the committee is uh, satisfied they have a good product here, and the product for the budget committee is what we call the resolution on the budget, or the budget resolution. Uh, the committee votes, and then it goes to the floor of the House or the Senate uh, for debate and amendments. Once the floor votes, we then have a House version of the budget and a Senate version of the budget, and they're probably going to be different. And so then they take a subset of those two committees, go into a conference, and reconcile the differences between the House and Senate version. Then they come back to both chambers for a final vote. Assuming that process all happens the way it's supposed to, the result is a budget resolution. And what a budget resolution is, is a set of allocations 
for the appropriators. So let's say the budget resolution says that the defense budget will be $710 billion in the budget year. The appropriators are limited to that number. They can't write an appropriation for $720 billion if the allocation was seven hundred and ten. So this is a process to instill some discipline and some guidance to the Appropriations Committee. Um, and the budget resolution also uh, will identify how big a budget surplus or deficit uh, Congress finds acceptable at the time. Uh, and there may be other instructions we'll talk about in a minute. Meanwhile, the Appropriations and Authorization Committees are holding their hearings. And they're hearing from the service chiefs. They're hearing from uh, acquisition executives. They're hearing from the chiefs of personnel. Uh, they're hearing from the operational commanders and getting input on, uh, on their work, right? Marking up the Authorization and Appropriation Acts, having their votes, their conferences, and so on. And the result is that the Armed Services Committee produces the National Defense Authorization Act, and the Appropriations Committees produce the Appropriations Acts. And if they're not done with that work by the 1st of October, the appropriators will also write the continuing resolutions. Sometimes, and this is why it's a dotted line, the budget resolution calls for reconciliation. What reconciliation is, is it directs certain committees in Congress to change spending or revenue by particular amounts. Oftentimes this is the mechanism for changing tax rules or for changing entitlement programs. Each committee then writes a bill to achieve that target and they are all get consolidated by the budget committee into one big bill. And this is kind of a special piece of legislation. It cannot be filibustered. Uh, it needs only a simple majority to pass um, and then it goes off to the president and changes um, typically permanent law, like tax law or entitlement law. But it doesn't happen um, every year. Now we know that the authorizing committees and the appropriators don't just rubber stamp the president's budget, but they may make changes to it. So here's an example of what one of those changes may look like. Let's take the Navy's P-8A Poseidon aircraft, for example. This is the, from the 2020 National Defense Authorization Act conference report. So remember, the House had their version, the Senate had their version. They get together in a conference to reconcile. We see here that the administration requested $1.2 billion to buy six aircraft. When the House marked up the authorization bill, they suggested nine aircraft. And then they added about a half a trillion dollars, or half a, half a billion dollars, um, to pay for those additional three aircraft. Um, and then there were some other modest changes. They thought there could be some contract savings. And uh, by buying extra aircraft, shutting down the production line would occur later, so the program didn't need that money. Over in the Senate, you see that the Senate agreed with the president's proposal. Six aircraft for $1.2 billion. They go into the conference, and apparently the House won in their negotiation. Uh, they added the three aircraft. They took out the cut for contract negotiations, but left the cut for the line shut down. In the end, there was authorization to buy nine aircraft at $1.68 billion. So this is how the department sometimes gets a different amount than what was requested. You can see a different amount for the V-22 as well. Now I mentioned that the appropriations are not always done on time. Sometimes there's a continuing resolution. This chart shows continuing resolutions from FY 2003 through FY 2020. We see that in five of those years, there was no continuing resolution. The appropriation was enacted on time. But in 13 of those years, or 72%, there was at least one continuing resolution. In some years, uh, like 2013, only had one. But it lasted 176 days, almost half of the year. Other years, there were two. Sometimes there were as many as seven continuing resolutions, which can be a bit disruptive. If you think that this is an artifact 
of the extreme partisanship in Congress in recent years, that's not necessarily true. If we go back in time and look at the last 50 years, we see that authorization acts are typically late. Late is to the right of uh, October, early is to the left. We see that authorization bills are, have typically been late, and appropriation bills have typically been late. In fact, authorizations are late about 82% of the time, and when they are late, they're about 53 days late, or they show up around Thanksgiving. Appropriation bills are late about 80% of the time, and it's mid-December on average when we finally get that appropriation. Ideally, the authorization should be enacted first because the appropriation basically pays for things that were authorized. But interestingly enough, 60% of the time, the authorization comes out after the appropriation. And only four times were both on time. The most recent was in 2019. Both were enacted before the beginning of the fiscal year. So late authorizations and appropriations is part of the fabric of defense budget. So that was an introduction to the overarching federal budget process within which the DOD's planning, programming, budgeting, and execution system operates.